So let's get started. So let's first go to AWS. So the address is aws.amazon.com slash console. And go ahead and just click on create a new account and just follow the steps. It's pretty straightforward. And after doing so, I'll see you on the other side. So here we have our main page of the management console. And what we're going to do is first set up a basic Elastic Beanstalk app. So Elastic Beanstalk is just a framework by AWS that makes it easy to deploy a app very quickly. So you don't have to do anything with Elastic Beanstalk, such as setting up a Linux server or setting up a VPC or anything or security groups. You can just very quickly deploy an app to AWS. So this is how we'll get our feet wet. We'll just start with a very basic AWS deployment and we won't even use our app. We can just go ahead and use the sample code provided by AWS. So let's get started. So go ahead and click on create new application and then we can call it app one. And then under description, we can just write app one react redux express app. So here in our app, we're going to create a new environment to launch our express node server in. So let's click on create one now. And since we're going to be launching a node express server, we'll need a web server environment. And like I said, we'll just launch the sample node app. So in the pre-configured platform option, let's select node.js. So I haven't had any luck just directly deploying the node.js app. So what did work for me is a little bit more setup. And so let's click on configure more options. So the first thing we'll need to do is modify the network. And we'll do this by setting a VPC. And we'll of course discuss VPCs in great length in a later section, but for now we can just set it up. So for the VPC, just choose the default VPC and you don't have to set up anything. The VPC, the default one anyway, is created for you automatically when you sign up for an AWS account. So just leave the VPC as a default. In the subnet, we can also select the default one. And this should also be created for you when you sign up for an AWS account. And then we can just hit save. Now for configuring the instances, and this means the EC2 instances, which is our CPU or our web server. So under EC2, EC2 security groups, just select the default one. And that's really it. We can now save and deploy our sample node server. And it should take a little bit of time to launch and create this. So we can just skip that and go right to the end. So when it's done, it should say successfully launched environment app one dash env. And then it should take you to the main dashboard, which should look like this. So we can actually click on the URL and see our deployed app. And here we are. It says, congratulations, your first AWS Beanstalk node JS app. So we successfully deployed an app to AWS. Awesome. And this is a completely running app. I mean, it's simple, but it is an app and we deployed it to AWS. So awesome. It works. So let's go back to our app and I'll show you a little more features of Beanstalk. So you also have configuration, which is which takes you to the page that we saw when we were first setting up this app. So if you wanted to edit anything after a deployed app, you would do so here. And next you have logs, which holds our error logs if we had them. We don't have any here, so we, we're not seeing anything. And next we have health, which just tells us if everything is working okay. If all our underlying infrastructure and assets are working or they're failing. Then we have our monitoring tab, which shows us how much our app is being used. And next we have our alarms, which tell us if anything happened and our managed updates, which is updates all of our resources. We have events and here we see that our app successfully launched. So you have similar events that are displayed here. And then tags are just user defined properties and we can attach to this environment. So let's now go through the cleanup process. And this is important because again, you don't want to be charged for using AWS. We want to keep everything free. So make sure you do this cleanup step. So first thing we have to do is terminate the environment and just click on actions and terminate environment and then just enter the name of the environment. So I said that Elastic Beanstalk, you manage resources. 
of AWS. That means there are underlying resources that we can look at and see that are deployed to our Elastic Beanstalk because Elastic Beanstalk is just an environment to manage these resources. Like the web server, the EC2 instance is actually a deployed resource to AWS. We just manage it in Elastic Beanstalk. So we can actually see that EC2 instance that was created for us by going to the EC2 tab in our console. So let's do that now. So if we go to our running instances, which means our running servers or EC2 compute units, we see there, right there, name app one dash ENV. So this is it. This is the EC2 server that was deployed when we created our Elastic Beanstalk environment. And as you can see, its instance state is shutting down, which means our terminate environment command work, and it's deleting this EC2 instance that it was managing. So the EC2 instance that was part of our Elastic Beanstalk environment is being deleted for us automatically, which is good. This is what we want. And we also have to release the Elastic IP address that AWS gave us. So we can go to the Elastic IP tab and then we can select the Elastic IP and it's going to be this one. And under actions, we can do disassociate address. However, when we click on dissociate address, we actually see that it does not exist because remember our Elastic Beanstalk environment is terminating as we, we are doing this. So it's deleting all of our resources that we use in that environment. We are deleting them manually to, because we want to be completely sure that all our resources are not being used. So what I'm showing you here is just like a safety net, just in case situation, but Elastic Beanstalk usually deletes them by itself. So this is why, even though it's saying this does not exist, it's, it's fine because this means our Elastic Beanstalk environment deleted it for us automatically. All right, and it seems the environment is still deleting. So let's just wait a little bit. And this is what you should be, should be seeing now. If it were completely, you should be seeing the word terminate in parentheses next to the environment name. So perfect, this is what we want. We don't want to be charged for using any of these resources. So this is good. So awesome, congrats on deploying your first app to AWS. It's a huge step. And let's keep going in the next section.